or, or whatever. So depending on, on your industry or your interests, you might be able to find very innovative, often small companies, um, which you would have never heard anywhere else uh, of. Because they're small, they're maybe in a very early stage of their product development, they're in a very, very early stage of their company development, uh, and they don't have the time, the resources to do a lot of PR work, because they first, they want to get their product out. And maybe they're very focused on their product and they're, they're very fascinated about their the, uh, R&D they're doing uh, and they don't think about the press. So, but with these companies, sometimes these small companies, you can get very nice sources, very nice articles about probably forthcoming products. You can also find products which maybe will fail, which can also uh, be an inter interesting story for a change because usually we hear about um, new products that are successful and we don't hear about companies that do R&D which actually fails but uh, for a change it might, might be interesting so if, if you go about these fundings and subsidies you might find very interesting topics there and if you're very desperate and you don't know actually what, what to write about today in your industry um, you could, of course, just simply call the PR companies, the PR departments of companies, and, and ask them what's the news, what is going on in the industry. I know that some of my colleagues would think that's a very, very uh, unethical approach because you shouldn't talk too much to PR people because they're there to deceive you. Um, I, I don't think so. I think you can cooperatively, cooperatively work with them. Um, if, if you build a certain trust with them and you can you can of course uh, be honest with them I mean they also or at least they should know your job as a journalist a little bit um, and so you can you can talk with them you can say look I can write this but I, I can't write that uh, I have to get in a different point of view things like that what you definitely should not do is just tell them yeah send, send me over your your press release and I'll just copy it and put it in my paper. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about calling them proactively uh, or sending them an email, whatever means of contact you wish, and ask them, okay, what, what, what's the news in the industry today? Not necessarily at their company, but sometimes they have something nice in their company. Sometimes that might also lead to something like an agreement. They, they tell you something about a product which they will tell everyone else uh, maybe only a week later or a few days later so you get the time advantage you, you could be the first with this with that story you could be, have better better sources with that story um, so talk to them sometimes they say sorry we don't have anything at this point of time and sometimes it gets a very very interesting talk It can help you to be the first to a story, that, that approach. However, often it may be the case that you're second to a story, clearly. Someone else at, the, at another publication, a rival publication, has broken the big news story. And now your editor comes and tells you, hey, why, why don't we have that story? Or go and write that story. It's, it's major news. I don't know. Um, iPhone or something. Everyone has to write about that and you're clearly second to the story. The other publication was first. What can you do? Um, what I try to do then is to cover the same topic from a very different perspective. Um, because it, me as a reader, I get bored to read the same story over and over again in 12 publications. One was first, one was second, and then everybody else copies that, and everybody has the same story. It's a little boring, isn't it? So what I try to do is cover that from a very different perspective. Um, not that Apple has that new cool product, but what does that mean for retailers? What does it mean for competitors? What does it mean for end users? I don't know. It depends on the news thing. What, it could, what does it mean to the environment? What does it mean for prices in the industry? There is this new breakthrough product which maybe is much cheaper to produce, it will be cheaper to buy, everyone else will go bankrupt or have to slash their prices, I don't know. Try to get that different perspective and still have the same story. Uh, you, your, your editor will like it and hopefully your, your readers will like it as well. Which uh, we should not, we should, we should 
keep in our minds. I think that should be your primary concern. Um, if your readers might like it or find it provocative or whatever, but uh, that not, would not, not bored. Not necessarily like it, but definitely not bored. Yes, it could be. It could be pro provocative. Sometimes you know your audience that bigger part of your audience has a certain point of view and you can write a provocative story with a quite a different point of view and see how they react which especially is nice I think in online media where you have a forum there where you can after you've published the article you can have people discuss the article uh, you can engage as a journalist I do that um, I write mainly online for, for Hesse Online, I do write print as well, but often online we have a forum for every article where people discuss and I uh, I go there and, and discuss with my readers. I really like that. It's a very direct feedback and a very quick feedback and you know that there's someone out there who's actually read it, you know, which is also nice to know sometimes. And Not being your model. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> And also, it shows the weaknesses in your story because people can ask questions. Um, they didn't understand something, or they would like to have some further information on a certain topic, um, um, or they maybe they they might point out an error you made. Can happen. So th I I always think of these forums there as a free total quality management tool because the readers find the errors first. You didn't see, the editor didn't see it, the guy who checks the spelling didn't see it, but there's a reader out there who will, that would be the first thing you will know about your article is the error you had in there. But then if, if it's online, you just can go and correct it. It's easy. So um, another thing I would like to bring across is that you should not be afraid of errors in judgment. This is whatever innovative industry you're in it's it's a very volatile thing that's the nature of innovation that it's volatile and that it can work or it cannot work I think Manfred you see I don't know oh he left okay sorry well he had it in his paper from from Telecom Austria they have this stage with different gates kill gates he called them where someone has an idea in the company and it has to go several stages uh, before it's actually released to the market, and when they release to the market, they still don't even have 50% success rate. Um, but in your article, you often have to judge a new development. You have to say, is it good or bad? Will it, it, it will hurt the environment, it will, I don't know, liberate women, whatever. Uh, whatever it is you're writing about, you have to make judgments. And one, the first judgment you make is, is that actually worth a news story or not? That's the first judgment you have to do is well, do I write about it or not and then a lot of other judgments follow but it can happen that you're wrong you say this is the, the wonderful thing and uh, and actually at the end of the day it turns out it's very bad for the environment it's very dangerous for children whatever or you will say this this will be the new success in the market and it turns out that consumers are actually quite lackluster to buy it they do not very into the product, or the other way around. You say, "Ha ha! Look what this silly product they have!" And at the end of the day, it's a big success. Everyone buys it. Um, you, uh, so you're proven wrong. What do you do? You just use it as your next headline. You say, "It's a scandal." Uh, it's a big surprise. Well, it is, uh, at least to you, it is. Um, it's a revolution. So you, you have something there in your earlier story or several stories you wrote about it. Turns out you were wrong. You just turn it around to your advantage to your next article and say, what a big surprise um, there is. That's a new headline. Every, everything's changing. Everything's different. And you will be in very good company with your wrong judgment. We had a few quotes today about... Um, very important people saying that there is no use for email, there is no use for the telephone, and so on. And I mean, you, you're just a journalist, so why shouldn't you be allowed some uh, errors in judgment as well? And the, the, the last thing is try to spot trends. Um, how, how, how can you do that? Um, there are as a journalist, you get a lot of news bits. 
a lot of small information, some company having a new product, some 